That happened here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We had a black police chief. And as a matter of fact, a black police chief who worked, who worked really hard to try and reform the police, but there's only so much you can do. Yeah. And that's one of the problems with the recent study that shows that there's a surprising amount of bias in uh, Toronto against uh, people of color per capita. Now, of course, there are more white people who are arrested by police who are, thank you, right? Did you see that? You see that, Bobby? A nice little segue. Yeah, um, we're born with it. I didn't even know it was happening. <laughs> I know, right? It was so good. You did, I, had to, I had to make sure you knew. Um, uh, of course, you know, like in Canada, across Canada, there are more white people incarcerated. There are more white people who have uh, incidents with the police. But per capita, the, the study has shown black people are more likely to be arrested, to be struck, and to be shot by the police. And I can tell you from personal experience that you you can tell that at certain times there's an even eagerness to, to, to do that. And that's with a black police chief. And I knew that was going to happen. It's not like when we got the black police chief, I wasn't like, woohoo, never going to get profiled again. Woo, it's a new day. Uh, See, I think, I think, uh, and this is, is going to be, I think controversial, but also complex, right? Like, I think that that's three issues in one, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that we're talking about um, police shootings versus the black population. We're talking about um, aggressive arrests and we're talking about the crime rate. And I think there's three separate issues. So even though it, uh, I guess we're talking about black people specifically, I think, it's, I think it's so hard to lump them all into one category. And we also say we're talking about black people in Canada and specifically Toronto. Yeah. Right, right. So it, it's, and, and I we just have think one, two, three issues in one. <laughs> hey. Hey. Wow. How does nice. magic? That, I mean, that's magic. good. Yeah. Um, but so I, but I think what happens, especially in the race politics world, because look, uh, I mean, a lot of us on this show and, you know, even Todd, we've been talking about race politics every week for months, right? Even um, me. <laughs> no, but I think it's different when you're a person of color. Let's be real. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, me, Moody, I and Lou, I mean, we're, we're 20, 30 I, years in of like, I am hey, the you're not hey, getting jobs. Based you're beige -ish. On You're yeah. beige -ish. No. Here's, I recognize that if this show is the Barack Obama Biden ticket, I am the Biden to make the white people <laughs> feel a little bit okay. Just so. sense, but here's my oh. point. Here's my point. Bear with me because it is an intelligent point, right? So I will say that you have been on this podcast with us, with you know three somewhat militant people of color. For, well, we've done this for a long time, and you've, you're 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 a good contributor. And we're talking about race politics every week for fucking months. Mm -hmm. And nobody does that. So my point is that a lot of people are looking at the headlines and they're going, oh, see, cops hate black people, get rid of them. It's like, I think it's like a, it's like a quick snap judgment, read the headline, don't parse the nuance. But the fucking nuance is like a very big part of what we're talking about. Because I don't think there's anyone in the world that believes that black people are not treated unequally by the police, okay? I think it's pretty obvious and common and well-documented. I think there's debates about if they're being killed by the police at a higher rate, because I keep hearing that actually cops are afraid to shoot black people because that's the number one thing that's going to end no, their job. No, the number one thing. I can tell you, Bobby, from personal experience, they are not afraid. They are eager to. And it's been, that's been my personal experience. I, I don't know, because there's that big study, right? And it was with Roland I don't Emory. care about a study. I don't well, care about, okay, I don't, I care about personal experience. Let's, oh let's make the point. I love it when people outside of the community tell you that your experience <laughs> has have, no I mean, bearing. Let's have, have the stats. conversation. I mean, I'm let's sure. Have the conversation because Bobby, let's have the conversation. I love you like cooked food, man. We love are, you like Bobby. Food. We're having but, the conversation. Okay, but let, yeah, me, I know. let me make my point. Sure. Let me I'll let you make the point, sure. Because we have a black economist from Harvard, right? Roland Emery, right? Is that his name? Yeah. You got to make a point. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's black. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He did a 15 year study. Okay. Uh, and in that study, and I'm not black. Okay. I'm just saying he is black and he has a study over 15 years that say black people are not killed at a higher rate necessarily than white people. They are arrested more. They are, there's more aggressive. They're treated worse, but actually surprisingly, and he said it was the most surprising result of his career. He was surprised that there's not necessarily evidence to suggest that black people are shot at a higher rate. Okay. And I'm not okay. saying that's right or wrong, but I'm saying yeah. it's a 15 year study. 
Okay, Bobby, this is excellent. So the next time a police officer says, where are you going? And puts their hand on their gun. I should say, oh, sir, there's a study that says you're less likely to shoot me. So I'm just going to walk. Can, can, I, can I say this, though? Um, his stats, and this is my problem with stats anyways, mm -hmm. is based on a core premise that the evidence he's using for his stats are verifiably truthful. When we have seen cases through, <laughs> throughout the last 20 years of the cops lying constantly about interactions with black folks, we have seen them planting guns, we have seen them planting tasers, we have seen all kinds of stories. My father in the 60s was a social worker, was telling me as a young black man, one, the police lie like crazy, and they always win, never get caught. <laughs> Right. So when you start talking about stats like they're facts, that's my main issue with you. It's why it's how you somehow think that institutions that lie consistently, consistently uh, in their reporting should those reports should actually be used and considered statistically valuable. So I take issue. I take issue with the fact that you think that I think stats mean truth, and I don't. I think it's part of a conversation. No, I said that we're fact. Having. I said fact. I'm not saying it's a fact. I'm saying it's a report, right? Oh, so, okay. I'm fine with that. I can't. No one's gonna say that. Oh, this person said it, so it's fucking true, and he's black. Ha ha. He's black. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Now, I a do lot of think, people are saying that. I think. I think there's gonna be people on the alt right who can use that and twist it however they want. But the reality is, you can take any stat. And depending on your political affiliation, you, you can go. spin it however you want, okay? okay. I accept That's that. all I was arguing. But here's was what I'm saying that. too. There's a complexity to this stuff because not, all, and I'm sure that you can speak to this too. Not all black people share a fucking brain, but at the same time, not all white police officers share a brain. So Absolutely. this is the complexity of the situation is that are there evil white racist cops? Yes. Are there black criminals? Yes. Are there innocent black people? Yes. Are there, and it's like, it doesn't matter what the okay. stats are in the reports problem, and the reports and the news. Hold on, with, let me make this point whole, though, right? Let me make this point is that you do not know, and this is the difficulty of being in this world. You do not know how the interaction is gonna go with a police officer and a black citizen because yeah. it depends on the individuals, right? I, 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 don't, I agree. I would just yeah, really I, quickly want to point, I want to add, but uh, I, I'll let you, uh, I'm gonna let you finish. But um, I want to add to that, Bobby, that I've got some very close high school friends who are police officers, who are awesome people, yeah. and yeah. they're not racist. And, uh, and I love hanging around with them whenever I go to Ottawa. And I have, and my wife as a, you know, as somebody who was a baker at her, at her um, uh, uh, store. And he turned, he said, he left baking and said, I want to be a police officer. And he's the sweetest guy in the world. And so there are some amazing people who are, and I think they feel the most frustrated. They feel the most frustrated by these stats where it's like, well, but it's like, there are the majority of police officers are not racist cops hunting down black people, shooting them left, right, and center. Okay. Correct. Can, can but I here's to, to Andrew's point. Let you finish too. I, 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 forgive me. I just, I just want to follow up on, on this one thread. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the belligerence of the white man is omnipresent in society and I'm so glad to contribute go. to it here. Just go, um, just go. The, the, so what they're feeling is like the, the, the crux of that phrase that all police chiefs have been using for about the past two, three months, which is, we have a few bad apples. They never finish the sentence, which is, spoils the bunch. Yeah. And it is that problem that we have right here. If you have a problem, if I went to McDonald's and I knew that 10 Big Macs somewhere in there would kill me, I would say we have a fucking McDonald's problem. So maybe we go and we clean out the fucking McDonald's. How about that? Like, Here's the I, no, 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 no. Hold now, on. Lewis is uh, going to speak. Let yeah. Lewis speak. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. But my, my problems uh, with, my problem is not necessarily with the police. It's guys with guns will always be my problem. Because what, whatever you say about the police, it's a guy. I'm a guy. I came up with guys. <laughs> That's the last human being on the planet I would trust with a gun is another guy, right? And I, where I think this argument can be expanded 
Uh, I used to work with at-risk youth, uh, including white street kids. And when I asked them uh, about a decade or two ago about whatever the latest black shooting uh, at the time, asked them about that, they were angry. And they, their, their anger was based on the fact that they think the reporting went towards white cop black uh, youth abuse and not did not look at white cop white youth abuse, that they were constantly being harassed and beaten by the cops for no reason. So that's, that's something I think should be expanded uh, just out of self-interest as a black male, looking at, at, at the broader picture of police violence, but also looking at what happens to men in circumstances like that, because uh, circumstances like uh, the, the circumstances the police find themselves in as far as an organization and on the street is concerned because you will find that it's very similar uh, mentalities, that there are similar mentalities uh, in gangs. You will find any in the military, uh, this is what guys do when they get in a group and someone gives them the authority to do crazy shit. 